Hello there, in this video we're going to be solving the following uh, optimization problem. Uh, so find a positive number such that the sum of the number and its reciprocal is as small as possible. So how do we solve this? Well, we're going to be using derivatives first off. Now find a positive number such that the sum of this number and its reciprocal. So we have some number we don't know and we know where we're adding it to its reciprocal, so what's the reciprocal of x? Well, that's going to be 1 over x, right? And let's say this is our function, because this is all the information we're actually given in this problem. And what we want to do here is find out the number here that would make it as small as possible. So the first step into actually solving the question is to, find, is to take the derivative of f of x. So f of x, the derivative, as you, that's how you denote it there, um, so what's the derivative of x? That's just going to give you a 1. What's the derivative of 1 over x? Well, 1 over x is equivalent to saying x to the negative 1, right? And when you take the derivative of x to the negative 1, you put the negative 1 on the outside, and you would subtract the negative 1 as the exponent by 1, which would give you a negative 2. So this is the derivative. And that's equivalent, just saying, well, Actually, this positive there is going to go away because we're going to be subtracting by negative x to the negative 2, which is equivalent to saying 1 over x squared. So this is our anti, well, sorry, this is our derivative. Now what we want to do is solve for critical values. Now the first one, uh, because you, well, critical values are either where it's undefined in the derivative and defined inside the function, or where the derivative is equal to zero. Now there isn't any place where it's it's undefined in the derivative but defined in the function, so we just have to set the derivative to equal to, or equal to zero, right? So if we did that, well, we can have one equals one over x squared, then we multiply x squared by everything, and we're just going to have x squared equals one, we take the square root, and we'll have x equals plus or minus 1, right? So, which number is the number we're looking for? Well, this, this is where we would use the second derivative test. What we want is a minimum, right? A, because we're looking for the smallest number possible. You can either have a minimum or a maximum when you actually graph the function at this point. And what we want is a minimum. And we can check if it's a minimum by using the second derivative test. So first thing we need to do is take the second derivative. I'm just going to erase this, this uh, portion right there. And the second derivative is equal to, well, 1, the constant 1 is going to become 0, so it won't even be there. And we said that this uh, negative 1 over x squared is equivalent to negative x to the negative 2, right? Well, if we take the derivative again, we're going, to, we're going to be putting the negative 2 down to the negative 1, making it positive 2. So we'd have positive 2 right there, so 2. Then we're going to have x to the negative 3. And this right here is equivalent to saying, well, our second derivative is going to be 2 over x cubed. So this is our second, uh, yes, this is our second derivative right there. Now what we want to do is input the positive 1 and see what we get. If we did that, uh, we would get a number that's positive, a great, greater than 0. And if we put a negative 1 in, we would get something that's less than 0. Now, if you know some stuff about the second der derivative test, you'd know that whenever it's positive, it's going to be concave up. And whenever it's concave up, it's kind of making something that looks like this, right? So whenever it's concave up or positive, you're, you're, de you're dealing with a minimum, and that's exactly what we want. Whenever it's negative, it's concave down and looks something like that, and that's maximum. We don't need that. We were looking for the shortest distance possible. So which number, do, which like one or negative one, when putting inside there is going to give us a, well, it's not a positive number. That's just going to be positive one. So x has to equal one. So that is the answer to this question. It's the, that this is the smallest x value you can have where you add it to its reciprocal and you get a, the a very, very small value, the smallest value essentially. Thank you for watching, and I do hope you're having a fantastic day.